Well, thank you so much for joining us via live stream. Thank you for those who are here in attendance at City of Light. It's a difficult time, and it's a time of a lot of change and challenges. We're so grateful that you're all bearing with us as we try our first attempts at live streaming and videoing our services. We appreciate your patience with us, and we're having a good time uh, because we're going to learn how to do this and perfect it. It's the Goldilocks syndrome. What's too hot? What's too cold? We're going to find out what's just right. Well, you know, several years ago, I had the opportunity of uh, going with a wealthy friend to a yacht show in the Bahamas. And I had the opportunity to tour all these fantastic yachts, boats, huge, huge boats with crews of 20 captains and chefs. And it was an amazing time to tour each one, to look through each one of these beautiful, beautiful ships. Well, at the end of the tour, my host said to me, which one would you choose if you were to set sail tonight? I said, well, you know, I can't choose. I, I really don't know. I love them all. I, it's so difficult to choose which one I would like the best. Well, today's text is inviting us to say, with this little note to say, maybe we need to make a choice. We need to choose how we're setting sail in life. Today's text is not all about a billionaire's yacht, but to choose the right vessel that we may have the right vessel, the right direction that we might take in the journey of our living. The story unfolds, as you read so beautifully, a portion of it from the book, chapter of Luke, chapter 5. It's the story of Jesus who is teaching the multitudes, and the crowds began to press in on him. As they did, he began to step back further and further, I could imagine, saying, wait a minute, there's an awful lot of limitation here. He saw two boats. He thought, might be that I could step out on one of these boats, get in one of the boats and sort of push out into the waters and teach from there. He did so. He happened to choose Simon Peter's boat. Happened? I don't know if it's by chance. I think it's more by direction. I think he chose this boat specifically as he was preparing to choose disciples. He got into the boat and began to teach and preach and talk about the power of the infinite possibilities. Because this is the very word that is shared with us through the Gospels. Infinite possibilities being there for us. And Simon Peter is listening as he's tending to his nets. Then as he concluded, Jesus then turns to Simon Peter and said, Let's push out. Push out. Let's launch out this boat. Let's go fishing. Go out and get a catch. There he's thinking for a moment. Simon said, Well, wait a minute. I've been fishing all night, Jesus. You don't understand. I've been laboring out in the waters trying to pull in uh, uh, the fish for the day for a, a catch that could be, bring profit to me. I've been working on, and I've caught nothing. And now you're asking me to go out again? He begins to contemplate and think, but what he's heard of Jesus is speaking of infinite possibilities. The word that is spoken of truth for us for our lives. And he begins to contemplate and says, okay, well, you know, maybe I will do this. He gets in the boat. He sails out to the deeper waters, casts his nets, and only to find an abundance of fish. So much that his boat is heavy laden, wondering if he's going to actually make it back to the shores, I can imagine. We find that this ancient truth comes to us from this book of Luke, where the storyteller is telling us how our life experiences are transformed. It's really a lesson for you and I. Now, we know that we some of us may read the Bible in ways of historical context. Yes, there's great history there. But looking deep, deep into the story, we find the story behind the story. We find that which is there for our daily living, for our lives. But we find that here, as we enter into this spiritual consciousness, the page of the Bible, this story is now transformed. And it becomes a living example for us. How do we face life's challenges? How do we go through hard and difficult times? How do we go through these times when we may have felt like we fished all night and caught nothing? What do we do in these moments? And here we find great comfort within the scripture as it comes alive to us through the deeper meaning, the metaphysical, the symbolisms that's found within us. So let's examine the nuances of today's lesson from the book of Luke chapter 5. The text says that they heard the word of God. I love this. The word of God is always filled with infinite possibilities, for that's its message, encouraging us to see beyond, to look deeper, to look beyond the appearances of anything that we're going through or seeing. 
Could it be that Jesus was speaking from Jeremiah 29, 11? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for you to prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That resonates right now in today's crisis. That, that same living word is alive for us today. I can imagine the multitude hearing them thinking, wait a minute, we've gone through all kinds of challenges. We've gone through difficult times. You're, you're telling us that God Almighty, this universe, this wonderful power of infinite intelligence has plans for us to prosper, plans for us to succeed, plans for us to have a hope and a great future. Could it be that maybe Jesus was speaking along the lines of 1 Corinthians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, and it's written, What no eye has seen nor ear has heard and what no human mind has conceived, things of God are prepared for those who love him. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. You see, that's the word of God. That's the word speaking to us. That's the word of infinite possibilities. As the crowd is pressing more and more towards Jesus, tell me more, I want to hear more. Jesus steps then back further and looking and seeing two boats. I love this. Two boats. Why do you think the author is writing two boats? Not many boats, several boats, just one boat. All that Jesus needed is one. But maybe there's some deeper message for us in there. That there are two boats and we can make a choice from those boats. It's there that we begin to see that uh, one of the boats was Simon. And he gets into Simon's boat and pushes out and asks, Simon, you know, can we push out into the water a little bit? And continues to speak. It's a wonderful metaphor that this boat is there, uh, one of two, as a beautiful example of our thoughts. Because boats symbolize our thoughts and how we float above the chaotic waters of the world that we live in. Two boats. The boat of looking life at life from within and the boat of looking at life from without. So often we face these circumstances and we're looking at how they unfold from the outward. We're looking for hope and peace and some sort of answers to all of our challenges from the outward. When the opposite boat that may carry us through is looking from the inward, looking from within, for it's there we find that wonderful peace. Jesus steps into Simon's boat. Jesus symbolizing a higher consciousness, the teaching of truth and abundance, bright life and hope and all this wonderful joy that's available to us. He steps into this boat, and that boat is seemingly transformed. You see, it's a beautiful lesson for us that when we welcome this higher consciousness into our own individual lives, that which carries us, our thoughts, can be transformed, be renewed, shaped in new ways that offer us so much more peace and comfort. Now, this boat, you might say, that was Simon's, was really the boat of excuses. Because you see, Simon had been in this boat previously all night long, fishing and catching nothing. And as Jesus finishes, he says, let's launch out, take the boat out. Come on, Simon, go fishing. Take your group, let's go fishing. And Simon said, but wait, 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 wait. Don't you understand? This might be the boat of excuses. The boat that says, you know, that's uh, the USS, I can't do it. The USS, this ain't going to work for me. The USS, don't you know, I've tried it before and it doesn't work. And we've all been there, maybe sailing on that boat in life. Maybe that's the boat we've chosen in some difficult experiences in life. Then there was the thought for Simon, what if? What if this could be? What if what Jesus was saying about infinite possibilities and plans to prosper, of things that are exceedingly abundantly above all so they could ask for a think as mentioned within the scriptures, that style of thinking and teaching. What if, what if this were true? You see, when we begin to compliment contemplate that, we begin to see new possibilities. We begin to see a world that changes for us. And what if we change the name of our boat from without to the USS within? What if we changed our boat from that which it says I can't to the USS now I can? What if we changed our boat and it was now a new name, something that now embraced the infinite possibilities 
that God has for us in every and any circumstance of life. Dare us to welcome the possibilities is what this scripture does. It dares us to say, are you willing to, in these times of challenge, times of difficulty, not to look on what your past has been, but what your now can be? You see, I think there are many of us who are facing all kinds of challenges today. We're thinking about this coronavirus. We're thinking about being sequestered. We're thinking about all the challenges of social distancing. We're thinking about not being able to go out and hang out with our friends and socialize. And we think, oh, this world is now full of challenges. And we think what tomorrow may bring is just more of the same because we're thinking from the past. But how about we think from the world of infinite possibilities? What is God doing now? What is God speaking to us about? What is the universe trying to convey to us through all that we're going through? You see, in this Jesus challenged Simon Peter to take the boat and go out into the deep waters, not the shallow waters, but to go out into the deep. That's symbolizing a deeper consciousness, a deeper thinking, a deeper sense of knowing and understanding that you've ever had before. Now is the time not to travel in the shallow, but to go out into the deep. To welcome the deeper thinking, the deeper consciousness. What is the universe speaking to us about now? What's unfolding for us right now? What might be an opportunity for change within our hearts and lives? Because this great multitude that is available to us, that Jesus is speaking of, go out and cast your nets because there's a multitude of fishes available. Well, there's a multitude of things ready to unfold for our lives in the realm of infinite possibilities. When we begin to think, when we begin to see our world, from the, the different perspective that Jesus constantly invited us to do so. You see, Jesus said, go out and cast those nets. And knowing that there are all this abundance of fish. Fish symbolizes great ideas. Fish symbolize op options and new opportunities for us. And the Spirit is inviting us today to cast our nets into deeper waters, knowing that there are new ideas, new options, new opportunities for us. I believe we're in a time of great change. And I believe that we need to allow this experience of what we're going through to change us, to enable us to see things from the deeper perspective than the daily to day shallow outlooks, to allow us to be changed and transformed from it, to say, I'm now a firm believer in infinite possibilities because I'm going to claim them. I'm not just going to allow the day to day news and media to be that which encapsulates my thinking and holds me in thought, but I'm going to move beyond it. I'm going to move beyond to the possibilities that God is doing something amazing right now through that which we're experiencing, where something is rising within. People are beginning to awaken to greater compassion. Neighbors are calling neighbors. I experience it in my own subdivision, saying, how can we help? We're going to the store. If you're not able to go out, I'll go get something and drop it off at your doorstep for you. There's this wonderful sense of compassion of people looking out for one another, responding to needs in new ways as never before. There's kindness that's rising within our world as people are awakening to say, let kindness rise up. Let us move to a sense of greater understanding of oneness within our world versus our separation and our division. We're moving in from a world of me, me, me to suddenly realizing we've got to start thinking about the we versus just the me. We've got to start thinking in a, in a more global context than just in our individual worlds, in our individual nations, our individual lives. We're thinking about how everything we do now touches one another in a more global context. Where you see, we begin to see things from within, not without. We begin to choose today the boat of traveling within, not traveling without. And our lives are transformed and changed. This is our opportunity for us as a culture, as a community, as a people to be transformed and say, I'm not going back when this whole thing resolves, and it will. Will we return back to the same old thing? I hope not. It's our chance to be transformed and say, we're going to move in new directions. We're standing on the shores of life and pressed by the limitations that come against us. 
And our choices are what boat will we get in? The boat of within or the boat that sees and thinks from without? The choices are ours. When we begin to do so, we begin to see that the very promise of God is an abundance that awaits us. Cast your nets out. Get out into deeper waters. Get out there and begin to draw within all the wonderful, infinite blessings and possibilities that are available to us that transform our lives in this wonderful time of change and opportunity. Allow this to happen with us to a greater way before. I'm inviting you to think about the choices of what boat you will choose and invite you in this day to catch the abundance that God has for you, waiting for you now. For today's our day to launch into deeper waters. Amen.